Hello, Edison families. This is Dr. Lee with a phase two reopening parent handbook. I wanted to review it with you so you have all the details for returning to school if you have opted for in-person instruction. So again, it will be starting April 12th. And on April 12th, if you have opted for phase two in-person, classes are going to start at 8 a.m and go through 1.30 p.m. with the teacher. And then from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. is tutoring hour, either with the teacher or with another staff member who will supervise different activities. And for prime time from 2.30 to 5.30, that will be only if you have received confirmation from them that you were selected or you were on the list to receive prime time. And those are going to be Monday through Thursday. So this schedule will be Monday through Thursday. So I like to say we will be open for school 8 to 2.30. Okay, 8 to 2.30, Monday through Thursday. Everyone who opted for in-person will be able to come to school from 8 to 2.30. And again, prime time is only if you were selected and received a confirmation from them. Okay, and for Friday, the Friday schedule um, will be 30 minutes uh, check-in from the teacher, and then the rest of the day will be independent work, except for fourth grade and fifth grade have music, and that schedule will be indicated um, from the teacher. Okay, and if you are listening to this and you are still remaining online, you will still have class from 8 to 11, so that might be a change but the class is from eight to 11, and then you'll be assigned three hours of independent work. Okay, so here is a schedule of what our office hours will be. So we'll be open from eight to three. Those will be the school office hours. Um, we'll probably be open earlier than that because we arrive earlier than that, but that's our office hours. And the schedule, as I mentioned, will be eight to 11 of the online and in-person synchronous class. So in the classrooms, again, students who are in person, they will also be joined by their students who are online. And then there is going to be lunch in the middle of the day and a wellness break. So you'll see there's a 30 minute lunch per class and a 15 minute wellness break midday. There will be another 15 minute wellness break in the morning during instructional time. And then from 11.30 to 1.30, that is, or approximately, depending on when the lunch is. So there's two hours of in-person in small group time. So if you're online, you will be doing your independent work. If you're in person, you have small group time. Okay, and then from 1.30 to 2.30, that is the tutoring hour and club hour. And again, we have um, every single classroom of students who are in person will be able to stay till 2.30. So everyone who opted for in person will have the option to stay from 1.30 to 2.30 and we have activities for you or it'll be tutoring hour. And then again for prime time. And prime time, as far as a process, I'll talk more about that later, but they will be located in 1105, 1106, 1116, and 1117. And you can email this email address if you have more questions or you want to be added to the waiting list. All right, and then as I mentioned, Friday schedule, Sometime between eight and 10, the teacher will select a time to Zoom with the whole class for 30 minutes. And then uh, music and uh, fourth and fifth grade music will be at those times. And then asynchronous work will be um, for two more hours uh, of the day, okay? And then student attendance. So students will be marked present or absent in PowerSchool when they are online or on site. So we're no longer gonna be using age codes, which is um, how we identify in-person versus online. We will just be marking students present if they are on their online Zoom class or if they're in person. So please make sure that students are attending if they are online, their Zoom sessions, and of course, in-person if they opted for in-person. And of course, uh, also, if you are going to be absent, you would call the attendance office as per usual. So as you would usually do, if you're gonna have an absence, whether it's online or in person, you would call our attendance office to, uh, to annotate that. Okay, for personal protective equipment, 
these are some things that are provided at the school. So of course, and we do require that students come with their own mask because they do have to enter at a gate and they're gonna interact with people. We recommend they come with a mask on. So it's either a cloth or a disposable mask. It should cover from nose to chin so that, and it should fit comfortably on their face. Uh, but they should come with that already. I know we've provided some at our materials distribution. And so of course uh, they would have some there. We do have extras and we provide extras when they arrive. Uh, we have disposable ones that we'll provide and we have more cloth ones. However, when you come to campus, you need to be wearing a mask right away, okay? And we're happy to give extras as needed. Every room will have hand sanitizer, every space, pretty much will have hand sanitizer. Uh, but we do recommend that students wash their hands with soap and water more than using the hand sanitizer because it is more effective, but we do have hand sanitizer available everywhere. Uh, every classroom has spray bottles that have disinfectant. We also have baby wipes for um, just wiping down the things like the computer or shared materials, and that cleans the surface as much as needs to be cleaned. And then face shields are optional. So we've had students wear face shields, that is optional. Um, we do not have student face shields unless it is requested, um, but it is, it is optional. Okay, and as I mentioned, the mask requirements, they should fit snugly and cover nose, mouth, and chin. So the mask should go all the way down so it captures any of the particles um, that would be in your breath or a sneeze or cough. Um, and bandanas are not allowed. So what you see in the picture here, those are disposable, but it should cover uh, whether it's cloth or disposable, um, that range of your face. Okay, and you are required to fill out a symptom checklist every day. And what that does is helps us to make sure that if you have any symptoms, uh, that you don't come to campus and that is acceptable. And we need students who might be sick um, to show symptoms that are related to COVID to not come to school and potentially pass it along. So there are two ways that you could go about completing your symptom checklist. There's paper copies. And as you can see here, there will be a link because I'm going to provide this parent handbook. There will be a link in there that you can click on. We will provide it in a packet that we're going to send home with you at materials pickup day, or you can complete, and this is new, the clear pass. So this QR code on here is a direct link to the clear pass login. You will need the student's ID and password. So you'd actually use the student ID and password to log in and fill out the symptom checklist. And then on your phone, it'll show either green, yellow, or red. And if it's green, then you're good to go. And all you would do at the gate when you enter is show your phone that shows that that student is clear to enter. Okay, so again, we have the hard copies in English and Spanish, and we have the clear pass, which is new, and you would use this QR code um, or click on the link where it says clear pass in the handbook that I'll provide to you in Dojo um, the, uh, to get that done online. It'll save paper um, and it'll probably go quicker, so you don't have to actually sign it. You're just going to complete it online and then show it to us. Um, but that whatever you're more comfortable with is fine. Okay, and then of course, distancing requirements. Staff should remain six feet from students when possible, and students are required to be at least five feet from other students and six feet when eating because their masks will be off. But we'll talk more about the meals in a minute. You were hopefully provided with a Kinza thermometer. And when you're doing check-in, you'll notice it, uh, one of the questions was, does the child have a, a fever over 100? Um, so is there a fever? Is there a temperature? Um, so you were provided with these thermometers and now given the quantity of students coming, we ask that you do a temperature check at home, okay? We are not going to be able to do temperature checks um, easily. So we're expecting that every parent is going to do a temperature check. So you should have these kinds of thermometers. We would like you to activate them if you could um, with the app and, uh, and of course, then that helps us just track overall health data, but it's your, it's your choice. You don't have to activate them uh, with the app, but it is helpful if you do, because then we see the trends, okay? And there's no personal information that we get. We just see the trends of health, okay? So again, you have been provided a Kinza thermometer in materials pickup. I believe it was in November. Um, so hopefully you find that. It's in a little box. 
and activate that and start using that on a daily basis. You might even want to practice that this week. Okay, what do students need to bring to school? We ask that they bring their computer fully charged. So they charge it the night before, they charge it overnight, and then they bring their computer fully charged. That's gonna help when they go in the classroom to make sure that they don't get interrupted with having to switch computers or plugging in. Um, we will have chargers and charging stations in the classrooms, but we do ask students to uh, try to come with their computer charged every day. And of course, bring your own charger. We will have extra chargers, but we will not have all extra chargers for everyone to be charging at the same time. So we ask that you bring your computer, your laptop, district assigned, no personal devices, just your district assigned and the charger that goes with it, okay? And then of course, bring your backpack, which has different materials. You might make sure that you bring pens, pencils, um, colored pencils, crayons, scissors, the things that teachers have provided and maybe you've kept it all in one place, um, but we would like you to bring that as well. It should include your math book, um, probably some notebooks that you've been issued that you've been doing your work in. So those materials will be important to have because probably if you're coming for in-person, you'll be able to just leave them in the classroom so you don't have to go and bring them back and forth. So it'll lighten the load of the backpack and we'll be able to have the materials in the classroom because students will be using their own materials and we won't be doing as much sharing as we would have done in the past. Okay, some new supplies that we're going to be providing. Um, since our drinking fountains, our water fountains are not uh, for use right now because students would get their face too close, we have water refilling stations. So because of that, we ask that you bring your own water bottle. And we are, just because we don't know, um, you know, sometimes students forget, we will be providing a water bottle for every student who's coming in person. Uh, well, we'll provide a water bottle for every student, but for sure the ones who are coming in person will have them available and we don't have um, other water bottles to provide and the drinking fountains are not activated now. So again, we'll provide you with a water bottle to help keep hydrated. And then we have paper bags, which they recommend are used when you take a mask break that you just put the mask in the paper bag so it doesn't touch anything or get any other germs or bacteria if so you don't set it down somewhere. Um, and we will provide headphones in the classrooms. But if you do have a set of your own headphones that you've been using and you feel comfortable with, we recommend you bring those. Because again, if it's gonna be on your face, on your head, and you've been using them, that is perfectly fine. And we'll continue to use your own headphones. But we will have an extra set available in the classroom so you can have um, headphones to listen. And if you have your old whiteboard, um, that you've been issued from the teacher, you may bring that as well. We are gonna have more whiteboards for the classrooms um, as well. But if you have yours, it'd be helpful just in case, you know, to have a backup uh, or you could be just keeping that one at home. Okay, and for classroom technology, just so that you're aware of some of the technology that we are using right now, especially since the classes will now be hybrid, again, some in person and some online, um, we have a live stream camera and tripod that is available if it makes for easier instruction for the teacher. It's not required, but it is available. And we have uh, box light Promethean boards or just the old Promethean boards in classrooms. And you can see here in the picture, if you're not already aware with what that technology is, that will allow the hybrid situation to um, continue to, to flow well. Um, every classroom will have two extra laptops and two power strips for multiple charging stations going on at the same time. Um, but again, this is why we ask that you bring your laptop from home because we're only going to have two extras to swap out if the battery dies or if there is a technical problem. So again, make sure you bring yours and uh, we'll have extra chargers in the room as well. Some rooms have a cart with also chargers in it. And of course, as usual, you can always call the IT desk um, with San Diego Unified. And the uh, IT number is here, the 619-209-4357. Or if you're at home and you still have internet issues, that is the number as well, 619-260-2460. And I also recommend if you are having problems with your laptop or your Chromebook, 
and you're missing keys or some of the keys aren't working or your screen is cracked. If there's a problem with your laptop, you can actually take it to Hoover High School. Hoover High School over on uh, El Cajon and Highland. There is a station set up there where you could exchange your laptop. And so we've done that for a number of students and it is very helpful. You get a nicer one and it, everything gets repaired. So ideally you would take it if you have technical problems, okay? Um, and of course, if you need help with that, we can help you as well. But going directly there is the fastest way. Okay, so new procedures for students in person. So arrival and entering campus. So as I mentioned earlier, students will present their daily self-screening, either in the paper form or the clear pass. And we're going to be at the gate on Wilson and on 35th. So during phase one, if you were here, we were do only doing entrance at the main office and then um, exit um, right by the 35th street gates. But now with more students, we're gonna be opening both gates both on 35th and Wilson, okay? And we're gonna have stations set up there for check-in. So you have to have your either paper form ready or your clear pass ready to go. So we'll just accept it and bring the student in and line them up where they need to be. The only exception for this entrance is our kindergarten and TK4 because they are younger, smaller, and it might be the first time they've been on campus. We are going to, and you can see the list here, have each teacher in a separate room with an external door. So 1104 is going to be Miss Bannister's class. So if you're from Miss Bannister's class, you're going to go not to one of the gates, but to 1104. If you're from Miss Bernard's class, you're going to go to 1105. For Miss Kepler Gonzalez's class, 1106, and Miss Salas's class, it's going to be 1107. And Ms. Castaneda and Ms. Aragon is 6108. 6108 is actually the room where we have done materials pickup before on the corner. It used to be the room where they would do voting um, right by the alley. So just off of Polk and 35th, you just go up towards the alley and it's right on the corner there. Okay. And that's where we're going to be entering all the little ones. Okay, if you don't bring your self screening materials, we will have to do it at the gate, but it will slow things down. And we wanna try to be as quick as possible. So if you can come ready, please do so. If you need us to check you at the gate, that's fine. It'll just slow things down. Okay, and then we will, once you're on campus, we will direct the students to line up six feet apart in their designated classroom lines, because we will have some, uh, the class numbers on the blacktop, painted on the blacktop. So you can see here uh, from this visual, that's where the kindergartners are, the top, top picture there. You can see that's where those rooms are. So again, off of 35th. And then for the first through fifth grade, uh, for the rest of the classes, besides those five teachers, six teachers, um, are going to be uh, listed 5102 from 5102 to 4205. You can see all the way across. Um, and we're going to have them lined up. And then once it's time to go, teachers will pick them up from their line and take them back to class. It's the best way that we can keep the students po properly distanced while they're waiting to go to class. And there will be markings on the blacktop where they will be able to stand. Okay, as for meals on campus, so there will not be breakfast in the classroom like there used to be. There will be uh, breakfast in the take home bag from the night before. So it will include a uh, cereal or pancakes or something. And, uh, and so that will be included, but in the, the take home bag from the night before. Um, for snack and mask breaks, so if students did bring a, a snack from home, they would be permitted to have that, and we might be able to have some snacks from the cafeteria available to students who need a snack break, but we do ask that they either bring their uh, snack from home or they use the snack from the day before, from the night before, the bag that they took home, okay? And uh, that is for cafeteria rules. And so as you can see by this little map here, um, this is our meal area. So this is our cafeteria and we have to keep proper distancing the way that we mark the tables and I'll show it on the next slide is to keep them 
um, opposite each other on the table and there's only two people per table, they need to sit opposite. And so for the first lunch, I'll explain that in the next slide, but they'll be on the X's for example, and the next lunch they'll be on the triangles. So they would just keep their distance while they're eating and then the next group will sit opposite um, so that they're not sharing seats. So it gives our custodians enough time to clean. Um, so you can see on this map, we've got dots and we've got boxes and dashes. The dots are just to keep help with distancing so that this will give you listening parents uh, peace of mind. We're going to keep kids distanced and we have some painted markings on the ground so that when they line up or when they're going from one place to another, they can see what the proper distancing is. And then while they're seated at the lunch tables as well. And then the boxes are, our, we're gonna call them our no mask zones. Um, so students are allowed to take mass breaks and they could take it maybe on one of the dots outside of the classroom if they're just going to take a quick break, um, line up outside the classroom, or during recess or lunch, they can take a mass break in one of those boxes. So we're going to have different places around campus that are more on the perimeter, on the outside, um, available for students to take a mass break. Now, when they do take a mass break in one of those boxes, there should be one person per box. That's how we keep distancing. So again, please remind your students that these are the rules and we will continue to enforce them because we do wanna make sure students are safe. Okay, and then as I mentioned for lunch and dinner. So lunch, they will be um, assigned a lunch time. Uh, there will be, and each teacher will be assigned a lunch time. You probably remember seeing it on one of my first slides. Once they have their lunch time, they will be going and sitting with their class in the proper distancing seats. So for example, lunch A1 would sit on the X's and we'll have all the tables marked. And then lunch A2 would sit on the triangles so that they're sitting opposite. And then it'll give custodians enough time to clean in between. And for they, of course, during lunch, take off their masks. They do take off their masks during eating, but they must remain in their proper seats and thus they are released to go to recess, in which case they can use the no mask zones. Otherwise, they would put their masks back on after eating. Um, students will be provided a grab and go dinner for the evening and, and it'll include the breakfast for the next morning and the food will be delivered to the classrooms before dismissal. For recess and wellness breaks. So again, during that lunchtime, uh, if you <clears throat> remember from the earlier slide, students would have recess and lunch or the wellness break and lunch together. Um, as you can see on this little map on the side here, we've created different zones, which I think is common to past practice regardless of COVID, but we wanna keep students separated by class so that they stay in their, they like to call it a stable group. So if they can be in their zone to be in their stable group, that's what that will look like. And uh, there again will be recess, wellness break and outdoor time could happen towards the end of the day as well. And, uh, and we just ask students, of course, and if you can continue to reinforce and support us by telling your students, reminding them, they need to observe the proper zones the mask wearing and the distancing. Okay, for dismissal, if there is no prime time, so if you're not signed up for prime time, dismissal will be at 2.30 and you would be released through either the 35th Street Gate or the Wilson Gate, and that is at 2.30. On, um, on the uh, parent handbook that I will provide to you in Dojo, you can actually click on the link to the full plan, but it's pretty much, uh, just a simple description of how that will work as far as how we're going to release the students to go. Um, for first through fifth grade, again, when we line them up for dismissal, they would be going to their classroom assigned spaces on the blacktop. And for the kindergartners, they'd be going back to the rooms that they entered. So we just wanna keep kind of the same flow of when they um, arrived and when they leave, it'll be hopefully a, a pretty common practice and they'll assimilate easily. If they have prime time, which operates again from 2.30 to 5.30, Monday through Thursday, they're actually going to um, go to the south end of the campus, close to the south parking lot and a playground, 
and in that door in the main building. So they're going to go towards that and then and then take a right into the building and there's going to be a check-in table for them there. So to go into prime time, they're not going to come through other parts of the main office. They're going to go all the way down to where the uh, the lower south parking lot and playground is and uh, closest to on 35th Street, closest to where the auto auto shop is, if you want a, a frame of reference. So they're going to go that way, but then turn right into the main building. So it's going to come in only through that door because there's going to be a check-in table for them and we're going to be able to keep them properly distanced and the flow of traffic effective. So they're going to check in there and students will be assigned to either 1105, 1106, 1116, or 1117. And then as they exit out, they're either going to be picked up out of 1105 or 1106. So we're going to um, just have the students, so we keep them in stable groups, exiting out of just those two rooms. Okay. And uh, we are going to continue to be a COVID testing site for students and staff. So there are some new dates. Um, if you check this link here that I put on this page, um, will be the link to making an appointment for your student. But we are only having uh, testing again every other Thursday for about two, two and a half hours. So if you sign up for any time, we will find a way um, with the COVID testing, it's UCSD, to make sure that that student gets tested on that day because it's only the once every two weeks. So if you sign up anytime, if you pick eight o'clock, if you pick 10 o'clock, we're gonna make sure that they get seen in that morning. And it could be after they've already gone to class. So you don't need to be here with them as long as you filled out the proper paperwork. Okay, so those dates are Thursday, April 8th, which is this week, um, April 22nd, which is when students are back, May 6th, May 20th, and June 3rd. So if you wanted to sign up, again, you can use the QR code here. Um, you're going to be provided with a flyer in your parent packet, uh, parent, parent packet pickup. And uh, again, it's this link here to schedule the appointment. Okay, that is it. I know that was a lot of information, but I wanted to make sure you had it. And you can always go back and watch this video again, or you can pause it and look at parts that you needed maybe a repeat on. But this is the information. Welcome back to school. This is our reopening phase two at Edison. Looking forward to seeing you soon.